All right, this is uh, another really fun one in the uh, toy category, fun toy category. Basically, it's uh, a toy gun. As you'll see inside, I've created a, I think, somewhat unique compliance spring, and it's absolutely modeled after the uh, BYU compliant gun that they did, and they made giant one all the way down into a molecular sized one. That compliance spring mechanism to balance it out was quite large and flat, and I really liked that idea, but I stacked it, and it takes a little bit of support to do that, so I designed in some support there. And once the support's removed, which we'll do in a minute, this compresses and keeps a lot of power and stores a lot of power that then can be unleashed to uh, send out a projectile. And in my uh, kinetic projector case, or in the case of my kinetic projector, when I pull back this uh, lock mechanism on the barrel, lift up the barrel, that's compressing the springs. And then you can drop in a uh, projectile and fold this back down, it automatically locks there. There's a little tab in the top of the barrel which is holding the projectile in position. And then it sends out quite a bit of energy. <laughs> so it's really, really fun. The, the grip folds up to make into kind of like a cool looking little package. I love it, it's fantastic. And as you know from watching my videos, I'm a bit of a kid at heart. and. This one really goes to that for me. So a couple of the other things that are cool about it, on the, the spring, there's a little protrusion that is your marker for shows when the spring's charged or not. So you can see, you probably can't see on the video very well, but it's at the empty zero here. When it's at the full dock dot, the spring's charged. You'll see when I slide that back. So you can see that move back and then drop in a projectile. And now you can tell that it's loaded it's not really, not, you don't know if it's loaded or not. You don't know if there's a projectile in there or not, but you can see the springs charged because of the placement of that. And then, you know, fire, fire it out. This has been part of an uh, undertaking on my behalf to really, really get a handle on compliant mechanisms. And I just released a couple of weeks ago this, which was a really big one for me. It's such a simple thing. Uh, it works really well. It's a it's a snap-in wall panel. So if you cut a hole in your drywall and you want to just cover it up, you cut a hole eight inch by eight inch, and then you can push this side into one side of it, drop this into the other, and it'll snap back and just hold in. And so on your wall, you'll just see a white panel. And to get it off, you just push, slide the panel over to the to whichever direction the spring is in, and let go, and it locks in place. So that's a really good one, and I'm gonna release soon this which is a little uh pill thing uh, pill dispenser so it just drops out one pill uh, for me if i need a tylenol in the middle of the night it's too much work to get out and unscrew a bottle and two hands and sit up and all that with this you just squeeze this it's missing the cover right now but you squeeze it and get one out anyways i digress all in an effort to get a really good handle on the compliant designs and so this is kind of a culmination of that. I'll show you how it goes together. It's super important to note that I am sticking to PETG for the springs in all of these. It does perform much better. You can print all of these in PLA, but its repeatability and durability is definitely uh, inferior to the PETG. I printed everything else in PLA though. So the whole thing is PLA except for the, the spring. And even the, the trigger, which is a compliant spring, uh, is a PLA, seems to be fine. And the other thing that's really important to note, the spring itself should be printed at 100% infill. And the reason for this one, obviously you need at least four walls everywhere. You need a lot to like, print for, stru for structural strength. But I also wanted as much mass in here, so when it releases, it really throws a lot of inertia and sends the projectile. And the same thing for the projectiles. They should be printed with 100% infill, even though uh, I've left a cavity at the back end so that they're front heavy. Try and get them to fly a little better. I thought about trying to rifle the inside of the barrel, but I actually started with an uh, eight-sided uh, projectile. But when you print that on its side, you don't get perfectly equal sides. And I found that that kind of affected the, its, its uh, travel down the barrel. The barrel is also eight-sided, 
and I subsequently switched to round projectiles that print standing up. They print really well. So print 100% infill and also randomize your start stop. If you don't randomize it, you'll get a, a line where the start stop is, which A, can be a problem traveling down the barrel, and B, you run the risk of taking this projectile off balance. Now, as this thing flies right now, I'm a little bit off balance from that isn't gonna matter because this isn't super accurate, but I've spent a ton of time testing and designing and reiterating it. And at the moment, there's quite a bit of room in the barrel. So it doesn't fly super true, be partly because the barrel's got a lot of play. Because I, when I first built this, I had a hard time getting energy from the spring to the projectile and out the barrel. The, the projectile would come out, just drop. And um, as it goes now, it's, it flies really well. I spent a ton of time experimenting with where the, uh, let's call it the firing pin, the head of the spring contacts the projectile. So the spring travels about 10 millimeters. If you start at like halfway in that, you're not getting a lot of energy into it. If you wait till the very end of that travel period, you get no energy into this. So somewhere in between there's a, a sweet spot. And I'm right now, I've lo I, I did have interchangeable firing pins in it so I could adjust it and play with different ones. I've locked it into the spring, but I can change that if anybody wants me to. Right now, I'm striking at 1.5 millimeters from the end of travel. So it's about 85% of the spring is has traveled and is presumably somewhere near maximum velocity. And bam, that's when it strikes the, the, the projectile. And it takes about a millimeter to get the projectile out of the, the detent that's in the barrel. But the detent's quite quite mild so it's not something that's gonna um, restrict the, the projectile too much so let me show you how that goes together when this thing comes off the build plate there are three components that have support you need to remove the first one we'll talk about is this um, the spring the power spring that, that makes this whole thing work there's four independent little pieces they should all just snap out with a needle nose this last one which you'll see uh, has a little extra on it you can see it up this little tail goes up in between these two walls so just make sure that that doesn't break off the support and it'll get lodged in there and once that's off these should compress you can see them in action you don't need to do anything else to it and that drops in here i've made it so it's a bit of a tight fit so you're already compressing the spring ever so slightly i think by about 0.4 millimeters just getting it in here so you there's no slack uh, and I like the way that performs. The trigger just drops in, sits there. The barrel has one piece of support because it prints on its side. So this just should just snap off like that. So again, one piece of support there. And then the barrel just drops in onto the post at the front. Tight fit, but it should just drop in. And that's the internals. So you've got the spring, just the uh, trigger and the barrel. And then you can snap on the other half of the housing. You should see it close up at the front here and on the back. A little note that I made the two halves of the barrel release interlock. And so if you just lift up one side of it, you can just get it to fall in. So once it's in, you'll see they sit together and that just helps them to stay together when you pull it back and they act as one, even though they have separate springs on both sides. And you can see that just pulling that back creates a little clearance at the back end that you can now lift up the barrel, okay? So that's that. Then a small clip goes on the front. One end of the clip, the, the build plate side is flat. The other end has a little taper. The taper end should go down. So on this end, on the lower end, and that just helps keep it a little flush there, but it'll work either way. And then the rear sight, very similar, just snaps in push it on. If you need to, you can press down. Mine's gone on and off a few times, so it's pretty loose. And then lastly is the grip. And inside the grip, in order to support the protrusions that go into the pivot here, I didn't want to uh, create print support from the build plate up, so I just built it off the wall. So they're tiny. You'll definitely need a little uh, pair of pliers to get in there, but you grab a hold of it and it should just snap out on each side. There's one on each side. And all that's doing is supporting the uh, the pivot point, the little posts that are the pivot. So we get those out, and then to just presses onto the body. 
I created a little recess into the corners at 45 degrees. So ideally you go into the corners at 45 degrees and just snap it on. And that's it, it's on now on. There's it also has a little detent on it to lock it in place. And so that's the finished projector. So fold this down, pull up the barrel, drop in a projectile. And you can see the projectile should sit flush with the back end of the barrel. And that gets to that whole point of where does the firing pin strike that uh, in the, in the um, travel of the spring. And yeah, there you go. Uh, I did make this little carrier for some of your projectiles. I had tried to make them internal and play with all sorts of things. So that just snaps on the side. So you got somewhere to store them and just grab the two ends and squeeze it and it just looks soft. Just that little flex makes it on. Have fun. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or uh, ideas for improving it. But I think it's pretty good.